Today, I'm going to answer a question from a student who goes by the initials DE. The question comes from the video on how grounding a circuit protects us. And the question is essentially, so the dangerous one is the voltage and not the current. You drop the voltage and you are safe even if you have 10 amps through the circuit. In fact, the resistor is bypassing the circuit and protecting the person according to Kirchhoff's law. Am I wrong? Okay. At the very least, it's going to be controversial to say it's the voltage and not the current. Current is the known quantity that we know can cause a certain amount of damage. For example, 6 milliamps directly through the heart can stop the heart from beating. To get that 6 milliamps, depending on your source, that might take 50 to 100 milliamps through the entire body. And different amounts of current can cause different amounts of different types of damage to different parts of the body. But to get current, you must have voltage. For example, let's make a circuit here. Let's say we have 100 volts and 1,000 ohms. Now, the human body typically has a resistance of around 100,000 ohms or maybe more. But under the right conditions, let's say it's a humid day, you're sweating, you get good solid skin contact, and in fact, the higher the voltage, the lower the skin resistance. So it has kind of an exponential effect there. So let's say 100 volts, worst case scenario, you might have about 1,000 ohms of body resistance. Now the common wisdom is that you need 50 to 100 milliamps to be deadly. How much current am I going to have through my body if this is me? Well, you take your resistance, divide it into your voltage according to Ohm's law to see your current. So how much current do I have? About 0.1 amps or 100 milliamps. That's certainly enough to theoretically stop the heart. So yes, 100 volts could be deadly. How about 10 volts? Now we've got maybe 10 milliamps. And um, I suppose if you could somehow get really close and jam the electrodes into your chest, you might be able to get enough to stop the heart. But 10 volts, you're not even going to feel it. I suppose on a worst case scenario, you might be able to feel 10 volts. You can certainly feel it on your tongue. Maybe a uh, worst case scenario you might feel something, but 10 volts is certainly not going to be able to produce enough current through your body to be dangerous. So voltage is important. But I've been hit by as much as 100,000 volts. It was with a Van de Graaff generator, looks something like that. And this particular one could produce about 100,000 volts. And when I touched it, it drew a spark about, about that long. And it felt like someone jammed a pin into my finger. Not really too bad, it wasn't dangerous, it just hurt a little bit. Why am I still here? 100,000 volts? Because the impedance of that Van de Graaff generator was so high it could not deliver more than a few microamps of current. So it was safe. Uh, a 100,000 volt battery that has a low impedance, yeah, that's going to cause sparks and flash over and all sorts of nasty things. So uh, it depends on uh, other factors. But the main thing is current is the measurable quantity that we can say a certain amount of current does a certain amount of damage. You can't get current without voltage. But once uh, you get to around 50 volts, uh, you might be able to start getting dangerous currents through you. And once you get above 50 volts, it's hit or miss. It depends on what your resistance is, so you don't want to play around. The reason I made that video was to bust a very dangerous myth. And that myth is that electricity always takes the shortest path to ground. Now, people who work in the business, they may say that, but they know what it really means. But people who are amateurs, I've seen make some very dangerous mistakes. For example, let's say we have our circuit. There's our 100 volts AC, DC, doesn't really matter. There's our working circuitry right there. Let's say that's 500 ohms. And I've seen people think that, well, I'm going to have a resistance of around 1,000 ohms. So here I am. So if I get connected to that somehow, and I'm connected to ground, and this is connected to ground, I'm safe because 
That's less resistance than me. That's the shortest path to ground. So I'm 1,000 ohms. That's 500 ohms. The electricity is going to go through the shortest path to ground, and I am safe. I have actually seen people work with circuits and think that they were safe because the electricity will go through the lower resistance. So that's a very dangerous myth. I wish people would quit saying it because it is not true. Electricity takes whatever path it can. So what do we have here? We have a simple parallel circuit. Let's draw it that way. Here's our working circuit, 500 ohms. Here you are, 1,000 ohms. So what's the main rule of parallel circuits? The voltage is the same everywhere. 100 volts, 100 volts, 100 volts. You still have 100 volts across you. So yes, 100 volts, 500 ohms. I'm going to have 200 milliamps go that way, but I'm still going to have 100 milliamps go that way. So I start off with 300 milliamps, 200 go that way, 100 go that way. I still have 100 milliamps going through me. So just don't say it. So that's the myth I wanted to bust. And the second thing I was pointing out is grounding does not protect you because it creates a shorter path to ground. It's because the grounding wire has so little resistance that even with a large current going through it, it can't build up enough voltage to be dangerous. So let's take a look at that scenario. So here's our working circuit. And we put a metal box around it so you can't touch the electrodes that are dangerous. And so here you are on the outside touching that and you're safe because there's no connection. Okay, but what happens if we get a short to that box? Well, now you are connected to it. So you're connected to that 100 volts. 100 volts, you're about 1,000 ohms. There's your uh, 100 milliamps. You're in serious jeopardy. So what we do is we ground this. And the main idea is that's grounded and this is grounded. So we have a connection between the two. And when we get that short, we have a circuit breaker. I'll just draw it as a fuse here. Let's make that a 20 amp fuse. We get more than 20 amps. It's going to blow that fuse and make the circuit safe. That's the main thing that grounding something does. But let's say that this is not a direct short. Let's say there's some significant resistance in there. So what do we have now? Let's uh, draw the circuit. Let's put our circuit breaker there. So there's enough resistance here that we get current going through here, but not enough to trip the circuit breaker. So let's say we've got 10 amps going into there. Okay, is that going to be safe because it's not going to trip the breaker? So what do we have? Well, this has zero ohms. Let's just say it's zero ohms. We have the current 10 amps flowing through here. Zero ohms, how much voltage are we going to get across zero ohms? Well, Ohm's law says that if we have 10 amps and zero ohms, zero times 10 is zero volts. So we're going to get no voltage across there, which is where you're connected. Let's draw this as a parallel circuit. So let's take a quick look at it. Let's see, we're coming across here. Then we go through that resistor to ground, and then I'm connected to that one. Let's put our ground resistors here. We come through this resistor. We also have another circuit parallel, which splits off to two resistors. So let's draw that. There's our working circuit, 500 ohms. And then we come to our short, which is right there, which then splits off to me. And there's the ground wire, and then they go back. So there's our circuit. I'll just draw that as 1,000 ohms. And I'm not going to put a resistance there. I don't need to make this illustration. And that is the ground. So I'm in parallel with that ground wire. So let's say we have 10 amps going through there. I don't need to know what this is. It just balances out so that the resistances give that 10 amps. 1,000 ohms. What's this going to be? Well, realistically, we're going to make that out of a good heavy wire so it has a very low resistance. Let's just say it's one thousandth of an ohm. So the question is now, how much voltage am I going to build up across that? We have a thousand ohms here and one thousandth of an ohm there. 
They're in parallel. Our total resistance will be something less than our lowest resistance. So essentially we still have a thousandth of an ohm there. 10 amps going through it. So 10 amps going through this one thousandth of an ohm. How much voltage are we going to get there? It's going to be 10 millivolts. So not enough voltage to be dangerous. So it's kind of a complicated circuit I've drawn here, but let's remember what the parts are. Here's my working circuit that I'm running off the 100 volts. This is me. This is our short circuit. So this is our connection from our working circuit to the case. So that's, I don't know what that is, but it's such that I get 10 amps of current through this leg. So 10 amps of current going through here. Uh, the total resistance is going to be basically 0 0.001 ohms between the two of these. And so 10 amps through 0 0.001 ohms, I'm going to get 10 millivolts. So I only get 10 millivolts across me. So it may still be a little confusing trying to follow this, but here's the point. I have a circuit where I've got 10 amps going through it. I don't know what this resistance is, it doesn't really matter, but I am touching right there. And the question is, can I get a dangerous enough voltage to be dangerous here? Well, I've got 10 amps, but 0 0.001 ohms. So regardless of what this voltage is, I don't know what that is, I don't care. I do have 10 amps going through this leg. I'm touching there. The question is, with this 10 amps going through there, am I going to develop a dangerous voltage at this point here? Well, with 0 0.001 ohms, I'm going to get 0 0.01 volts, one hundredth of a volt across me, so it's not dangerous. So here's my short circuit. Here's my ground wire. They're in series. I'm touching above the ground wire. Even with that big current, I cannot get enough voltage on that ground wire to be dangerous. So that's why the ground makes us safe, because that ground wire has such a low resistance that even with a big current going through it, I don't get enough voltage to be dangerous. So let's back up a little bit to the question. So it's the voltage that's dangerous. Let's not say that. That's, that's going to go against what everyone says, and it's it gets complicated, but it's the current, the measure of the current that we know is dangerous. Six milliamps directly across the heart can stop it. 50 to 100 milliamps across the body can put enough through the heart to stop it. So that's the quantity we know. How do we get that? We must have voltage to get that current, but we're not going to any way on God's green earth get that kind of current with very low voltages. So we must get up around 30, or more volts before we start even thinking of being dangerous. Now once we get above that, it depends. You can get killed with 50 volts, or you can get hit with 100,000 volts and just feel like a pinprick. It depends on the conditions. So it depends on your resistance and how much voltage and how much current you get. So don't say it's the voltage that's dangerous. It's the current that actually kills. But there's the scenario that shows how grounding protects you. Once again, the important thing is don't say electricity takes the shortest path to ground. Even if you know what you're talking about and know what that means, you say it to lay people and they think it means that if I have a small resistance in parallel with me, it protects me and I showed that it does not. And I'm showing here how a ground wire safe makes things safe because even if I get a short and get a high current through that ground wire, that ground wire has so little resistance that it cannot build up enough voltage to be dangerous. So those are the two points I was making in that video. Hope that cleared things up. So thanks for asking the question. If you still need some more clarity, go ahead and ask again. I'll do my best to give an answer that makes sense to you. I answer as many questions as I have time for and other people jump in and answer the questions for me, which is great. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. 
And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.